Um, so my name is Val. Um, I'm one of the um, ST4 World Registrars. And today from the 135, I just wanted to briefly talk about um, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome or PRES. Um, so uh, PRES is a clinical radiological diagnosis. It is a diagnosis which is based on a combination of typical clinical features, causative factors and um, imaging features, which are normally seen on MRI scan. Um, it can affect people at any age, but it mainly tends to affect uh, young or middle-aged adults with a mean age of 45 years. Um, it also has a female predominance, um, even uh, excluding for patients with eclampsia and preeclampsia. Um, in terms of the way that PRES presents, it most commonly presents with the symptoms that you can see listed here, which include encephalopathy, seizures, headache, and visual disturbance. Encephalopathy um, can be variable and can range from mild confusion and cognitive deficits to coma. Seizures tend to occur within the first 24 to 48 hours, and a minor percentage of patients can also go on to develop status, but patients with PRES um, rarely will present in status. A headache can be seen in about 50% of patients and tends to be typically gradual onset, diffuse and dull. Patients may also have a thunderclap headache, but this is less common and raises the possibility of an alternative diagnosis such as RCVS. Um, even though PRES tends to affect the posterior um, part of the brain, visual disturbance is only seen in about 39% of patients, um, and it can be very variable, including things like diplopia, visual field deficits, um, visual hallucinations, and color vision abnormalities. Patients can also have other deficits, um, such as hemiparesis and aphasia. In terms of causes, PRES has multiple uh, causative factors and can be associated with various conditions. This is in no way an exhaustive list, but hopefully provides um, a comprehensive uh, list of the most common causes and conditions associated with PRES. So these would namely be hypertension, sepsis, renal failure, eclampsia and transplant patients, um, as listed here autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and vasculitis, and cytotoxic and immunosuppressive medications such as chemotherapy. Even though there isn't a single diagnostic test for PRES, um, uh, MRI uh, scan is very supportive um, of, uh, for the diagnosis. The most common and the hallmark finding for PRES is the presence of vasogenic edema, which tends to be uh, bilateral and occur in a symmetrical pattern. Um, and it, it tends to predominantly affect the subcortical white matter and, and also can extend to involve um, the cortex as well. Um, the most common regions, as we said before, that PRES tends to affect is causing edema in the parietal and occipital regions, but other non-posterior distribution um, of edema can also be seen. Um, as you can see on the picture on the right, there are various different patterns of edema, um, such as the holohemispheric watershed pattern, which you can see on image A, um, and also the superior frontal sulcus pattern in, in C and the central pattern in D. In the superior um, frontal sulcus pattern, you tend to get edema in the ACA, MCA watershed um, territory um, present deep in the superior frontal sulcus. And in the central pattern, um, there tends to be edema in deep white matter, pons, cerebellum, thalami, um, and other structures without usually subcortical and cortical involvement. Um, PRES uh, can also uh, cause um, intracranial hemorrhages, and these can be seen in about 10 to 25% of patients and they tend to be subarachnoid and parenchymal. In terms of management, acute management is mainly about supporting patients through the acute phase of the illness and can involve things like maintaining adequate patient hydration, using anti-seizure medications to achieve seizure control, and it also involves identifying and correcting the trigger. For instance, um, using antihypertensive agents to treat hypertension, early delivery in pregnant patients, um, and stopping any causative medications, and also correcting uh, electrolyte abnormalities. 
malignant pres is defined as um, coma um, with evidence of cerebral edema on neuroimaging and deterioration of the patient despite um, standard treatment for raised intracranial pressure. The management of malignant pres involves quite aggressive supportive measures, which can even uh, include mechanical ventilation. Um, and sometimes patients uh, with raised intracranial pressure um, that are not responding to standard treatment may require neurosurgical intervention. Um, long term, generally patients with PRES tend to look quite awful, but they uh, usually make a good recovery. Um, however, PRES um, has been quoted to be associated with a mortality of about 19% and about 44% of patients can be left with some kind of uh, residual focal neurological deficit. Um, the predictors for poor outcome are listed in the table on the right, and they are um, based on a combination of clinical and imaging features, which you can see here. And there's also a small percentage of about 4% of patients um, who also can develop recurrent PRES, and this is mainly seen in patients who have persistent risk factors.